In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upscale and enhance your PSP games using the PPSSPP emulator. With these in-depth graphics guides, I explain every single graphics option and more importantly, show you what it actually looks like with side-by-side -side examples if needed. So by the end of the video, you'll know what you're setting, why you're setting it, and if you should be setting it in the first place. In comparison to other emulators, PPSSPP is gloriously simple to use. So not only am I going to show you every single option, I'm also going to show you how to use cheats for various video hacks and enhancements. We're also going to be covering the infamous Bloom problem and how to fix it. There's a little bit to cover, so let's just get straight into it. So you want to start the emulator up, go into settings and make sure that you're on the graphics tab in the top left hand corner. Now normally I'll go through these settings sequentially top to bottom, but for this video we are going to be jumping around a little bit so we can keep all the video settings in one section. So starting with the graphics backends, if you have Vulkan available, you should definitely be using it. It generally performs the best and you can use multi-sample anti-aliasing with it, which unfortunately you can't do with the rest. There's also three texture shaders that are exclusive to Vulkan, one of which is actually really good. If your hardware doesn't support this, you should definitely be using Direct3D11 instead. It has good compatibility and it performs better than OpenGL. Direct3D9 is really only here for older machines and older versions of Windows. So unless you have either of those, you can pretty much ignore this one. And OpenGL is what Android users are going to be using if they don't have Vulkan available, because Direct3D is only for Windows. For this video, I'm going to be switching over to Vulkan. Rendering resolution, of course, increases your internal resolution. The higher you set this, the better the graphics are going to look. And also, the amount of jaggies is also reduced without the need for anti-aliasing. Now, you should probably be setting this to the resolution of your screen. If you set it higher and it's having to downsample, you can get some weird artifacting and some other strange stuff going on. Android users will be restricted to 5x. And because you're on a smaller screen, you've definitely got a lot more flexibility with what you set. You can pretty much set it to your personal preference unless you're restricted by your performance, which is definitely going to be a factor when on Android. Now this multi-sample anti-aliasing option will only appear here if you've got the Vulkan backend set. And we've got up to 8x available. As you can see, it does a really good job at removing the jaggies. It does, of course, eat performance, but I recommend setting this as high as you can for the best possible image. However, if you're an Android user and you're playing these games on a smaller screen, you may want to avoid this entirely. It will absolutely kill your performance and you're probably not going to notice those jaggies on a smaller screen. Full screen is pretty obvious, activate it to start in full screen mode. Now VSync, normally I would advise turning on by default and only turning it off as and when you need to. But with this emulator, it is recommended to leave it off by default and only turn it on if you're actually encountering screen tearing. Most games don't actually suffer from that, and if you turn this on by default, you're just increasing your latency. Inversely, Android users need to leave this on by default, so you don't encounter any frame rate or pacing issues. We're going to come back to display layout and effects a little bit later on, but for the moment we're going to scroll all the way down to texture filtering. So anisotropic filtering sharpens textures when they're being viewed at extreme viewing angles, and this is set to time 16 out of the box. It's not that performance heavy, and it's definitely the best setting to use. Moving down to texture filtering, and we're now wading into the more subjective visual stuff. So setting auto will follow the exact same filtering that the devs apply to the game, making it the most authentic and technically accurate. Setting nearest takes any linear smoothing effects that the devs apply to the game and turns it off, because nearest doesn't use any smoothing effects. This does present a sharper overall image, but you've got to remember, the devs applied those smoothing effects for a reason so it doesn't look like a pixelated mess in 3D games. However, where setting nearest totally makes sense is if you want super sharp pixels in pure 2D games, but for 3D games, in my opinion, it just looks weird. Setting linear will apply that linear smoothing effect to every single texture in the game, including ones that didn't originally have it. I'm not too sure what the practical application for this one is, but it's there if you want to use it. And finally, we've got auto max quality. This is doing the same thing that Auto is doing, so it is accurate and authentic, but it's also applying mitmaps to areas of the game that didn't originally have it. In layman's terms, this gets rid of the shimmering and flickering that you see in objects in the background. It uses those additional mitmaps to find the sweet spot with anisotropic filtering, which is why this is the best setting if your performance can handle it. Smart 2D texture filtering is very much still a work in progress and is pretty much brand new. 
it's really only intended to fix a handful of issues in a small amount of games, only to be activated for those games specifically. And I'll put a link for the progress report in this one in the description below. Moving on to texture scaling, and these options will further change how your textures will look from whatever you've just set in the previous section with texture filtering. Now texture scaling is used to give the illusion of high detail on those low resolution PSP textures. And to say that opinions vary on this one is an understatement. Some people absolutely hate these and some people think they're a prerequisite. And if you're like me, you'll use them on a game by game basis depending on how it looks. So just to preface this, everything in texture scaling is pure personal preference. It's just how you want things to look. So whether you use it or not is up to you. But of course, I'm still gonna show you all four of the different looks that we can achieve. But before I do that, I need to mention the upscale level first. If you're using a 1080p display like most of us are, you should be using 4X. 5X is really meant for 4K monitors. And if you don't want to use texture scaling at all, make sure you select off with this option. Android users will be restricted to times two and times three. Times two for lower resolution devices, times three for higher resolution devices. Now upscale type will change how your textures will look. And we've got four different algorithms that we can choose from. So to make this easier, I'm gonna to toggle through each one whilst I've got a game loaded up so you can see what they look like. So first up, we've got XBRZ. I'm not the biggest fan of this look, and if I'm being honest, I think it looks like a wet trampled painting, but it does have its fans, and for some games, it may look flattering. Definitely one of those looks where you either love it or you hate it. Next up, we've got hybrid filtering, which is using a mix of linear filtering and XBRZ. It's applying linear filtering to all of the larger objects and XBRZ for all the finer detailed smaller objects. Next up is Bicubic. This is my favorite one of the bunch because I think it looks the most natural. And that's if I'm using texture scaling in the first place. And lastly, we have hybrid plus bicubic. This is basically hybrid mode, but much, much smoother. However, it does make it the most blurry looking one of the lot. Now this texture shader option is only available for the Vulkan backend. And these will override whatever you're using for your normal texture scaling. As you can see, when we select one, we lose access to these options. Using one of these isn't as performance intensive, so if you're getting slow down doing it the normal way, you may want to use these. And we have more XBRZ options. Times two if you're using a lower resolution, and times four if you're using a higher resolution. MMPX gives an overall more pixelated look, but those pixel edges have been smoothed off just a little bit. And for me, I actually quite like this one, and I will sell it for certain games. For me, I consider this to be the better looking sister of using nearest filtering on its own. Now that we're all done with textures, we can scroll all the way back up to the top to display layout and effects, AKA shaders. And you want to mess around with these when you've actually got a game loaded up. So you can see what they actually look like and see your changes take place in real time. Once you've found a good spot in game, just press escape on your keyboard and then click on display layout and effects on the right hand side. The first thing I need to mention here is the screen scaling filter. This makes a tiny difference, but it's still a difference. Set nearest if you want a sharper image and set linear if you want a smoother image. As you can see, if I switch between the two, you'll be hard pressed to actually see the difference, but there is a difference. So to actually add a shader, you just need to click on this big plus button in the top left hand corner. Some of these are just for fun. Some of these are a little bit more functional like anti-aliasing. And then you've got some that are only intended for the original resolution. And when you select one of these, it will automatically drop your resolution to 1x. The majority of the others here are literally just for goofing about. But there is one in this list that I consider to be absolutely essential, and that's color correction. Selecting this allows you to change the brightness, saturation, contrast, and the gamma all independently, which is a godsend. The reasons for this being so essential will become apparent when we cover how to remove the bloom. Now the nice thing with these shaders is that you can stack them. So say for instance, if I wanted to add another shader, let's say I wanted to add PSP color, but I wanted to increase the brightness with it as well, I can do so. So you can use these in conjunction to create any look that you want. And I fully recommend have a play around with these to see what you like and what you don't like. So it seems like every modern emulator has its major hurdle that it needs to overcome. Not because of the emulation, but because of the way the original hardware works. Like Dolphin and its shader compilation stutter, 
PCSX2 with its deinterlacing and anti-blur, and PPSSPP with its bloom effects, otherwise known as the bloom problem. So to put this into layman's terms, when you're increasing the internal resolution, the bloom effects that a lot of devs actually used don't line up correctly, causing this weird ghosting effect. This doesn't happen with every game that uses bloom effects, but when it does happen, it is quite annoying. And we've got three different ways that we can get rid of it. The first way is to change the rendering resolution down to 1x. Setting the original resolution allows all of those bloom effects to line up, but obviously you might not want to drop your resolution. The second way we can remove it without having to lower our internal res is by using lower resolution for effects. This has been made for this issue specifically, and we've got three different options to choose from. You want to start on safe, and if you're still seeing ghosting, then crank it up. Keep in mind, this isn't always going to work, even if you set it to aggressive. The third, and in my opinion, best way to remove the ghost artifacting is to either reduce or completely remove the bloom using cheats. By completely disabling the bloom, we are removing the root cause of the issue. But as you can see, it's not really what the devs intended. Those bloom effects actually added some quality to the image. Without it, it looks quite muted and the brightness isn't as much. But as you remember from earlier on, we have our color correction shader to bring all of this back up. So what I do is hit escape, go to display layout on effects on the right hand side, and then add a shader. Obviously, I'm going to add the color correction one. And the only thing I really change here is the gamma. This acts more as dynamic range than it does overall brightness. And I'll bring this up to where I feel like it needs to be. But again, all of this here comes down to personal preference. I might even change the saturation. So set this up to however you want it to be. And that's even if you want to mess around with it in the first place. Alternatively, we can keep things authentic by adding those bloom effects back in just without the ghosting. So go back up to your shaders and you've got two bloom shaders to choose from. One with no blur and one with a little bit of blur. Choose whichever one is your preference. And we've got two options that we can play around with. This gives us granular control to make it look like however we want. However, what I like to do if I'm adding the bloom effects back in is try to match it to the original game as close as possible. With these cheats, there is so much on offer depending on your game, especially for enhancements. From optimizations, fixes, tweaks, FPS hacks, to full-blown controller hacks. And this is now one of the first places I'll check when I'm playing a game just to see what I can do with it. If you want to use those cheats, it's easiest and best to add an entire database to the emulator, so you can have all the cheats for all the games. There are loads of different databases out there, but this is considered to be the best one. It's still maintained and they display all of their sources. You want to download the database with this link here, and I'll pop a link for this page in the description below. Once downloaded, obviously you want to unzip it like I've done here and open it up. Then you want to bring up the emulator file system, go into the memstick folder, then the PSP folder, and you can see we've got a cheats folder right here. Open this up and then move this cheats database file into this folder. Then you want to make sure that enable cheats is active in the system options. Then you just want to start your game that you want to use cheats for. Once you're in game, just press escape on your keyboard. And as you can see, we've now got a cheats option on the right hand side. Click on this. And if your cheats are not pre-populated here, just press this import button in the top left hand corner. And if that doesn't work, you can manually select the cheats database file with this browse button here. And from here, you can go nuts, see what works and what doesn't. Keep in mind that these cheats will toggle on just fine, but you will need to restart the emulator for them to toggle off correctly. All of these options that I haven't already shown you are either performance options or speed hacks and don't really have an impact on the overall image. How you set this up really depends on your hardware and performance. If you've got good hardware and you don't really need to worry about it, you can leave everything here on default. If you're on lower end hardware, I recommend following this guide that's on the PPSSPP website. Now before I close out the video, here is what I've settled on for my defaults just in case you wanted to copy me. Obviously you may need to adjust this for your own performance. But the main takeaway with this is that texture scaling I'll use on a per game basis, depending on what it looks like. There we go, that was my full in-depth graphical options breakdown guide thingy for PPSSPP. Now if you like these kinds of in-depth guides, I've already covered the Duck Station, PCSX2 and Dolphin emulators. And what's next on the hit list is really up to you. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. If you found this video helpful, slam me a like. And if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.